Greetings, mortals. I am Natus, one of the rulers of Hell, or specifically Manga Hell, and today we'll be reacting to the newest chapter of Fire Force, chapter 287, The Holy Woman of Despair. Huh. A bit, a bit on the nose there, Okubo, huh? Oh well, not gonna be picky. So yeah, no, supposedly enough, the first page is not actually the usual cover, color spread or cover, whatever. It's actually a bunch of panels. I guess uh, Okubo decided to speed things up so much that he, we're not even going to get them anymore. Oh well, what can you do? So yeah, the first panel is, I guess, younger Homea. As the narrator is like, the young stayed close to uh, her beautiful eyes until the promised day. Then we get a flash of light, and the narrator continues with, She closed herself off from the light and in turn received God's divine revelation. She seek the light that dwell deep within the darkness. There we got a a bunch of, I'm guessing it's supposed to be a representation of humanity. They, and then we have eventually the fearful emotions of the human started flowing into her. Yet the young saint simply kept her eyes closed and bared all. There we get. Oh, uh, it actually turns out that we've had like a little change of cover spread with the actual cover spread being a bit later. And we get what well, seems to be our human eye as the name is like a open. Upon opening her eyes, she realized. Then we cut back to the outside where we see the eye thing that it's supposed to be getting the spear. As the nerd is like, her eye was looking down on Earth, on this planet's subconsciousness. And then we see Earth, and that thing is up there again. And then we have um, a bit of Homea's back flashback or something, as we see Homea. Once her eye, pure eyes were were finally opened, she first let down a single tear. There we see Charon, and there it is like it was for the sake of a warrior who fought for her until the bitter end. Yep, now he, this is a and then we see how Maya with her crown, I guess, being lifted up as she like raises her arms into the light. And it continues with, and then she offered her praise to the light at the end of a long darkness. And then we cut back to the reality as we see uh, her speaking, Oh, destined brothers. And we see Shun Shinra, which, surprisingly enough, I'm gonna say it's because Shun's a little more, more behind Shinra. And that's why it did, or maybe it's a weird plane. But it looks like they're actually more similar in size than they really should be. As we then have Homea's eyes and Surprisingly enough, she doesn't look like Iris. Hmm. I was going to uh, to be Iris or something like that, but I guess she's not. It's just like her eyes just seem to be completely like white. I'm guessing she's blind because of that. And then we have uh, like, and also we have like uh, Hamea's eye, one eye exchanging a tear, and then we have her eyes filled with compassion and sorrow seem to soak up everything around it. And then we have uh, Shinra and Shu looking shocked. And then we have the need to be like, The siblings who were capable of stopping time were kept away by the saints' compassion, freezing them in place. I guess that's the reason why they are not going to jump in and try to intervene. And then we have uh, Sumeria being like, Inca, Sum no, Homea being like, Inca, Sumeria, come to me. And then we have uh, Homea putting her hand to Inca. And then we have the narrative like the girl who could see the future saw it ill fate for herself in the hand offered to her. And yet she took it without hesitation, which is actually referencing the fifth pillar arc. And then we see Samaria in that weird nun outfit and Inca hold, grabbing the hands as they seem to, as Inca and Samaria seem to be bursting in flames. And then it's just like both disgust and destruction. Referencing Inca and Sumeria as she knows that this and then Inca starts to laugh as she's being burned alive And yeah, I'm guessing Inca and Vanka would get along well And then we have I'm guessing Inca's hand disintegrating as she falls 
on the ground, burning, having her body being burned to flesh and fully as there's just like a person's death is it it is both despair and salvation and they have so many like finally thank you so much and they have Inca falling to the uh, head fully coming down as both of their corpses are still burning be around Homea now this uh, Faithful Inca has actually been hinted in the fifth battle arc since I believe that that at the end of that battle with Chara and Shinra, something very similar to this looked like. I, I think Inca was actually wearing, you know, normal, uh, you know, her normal school clothing, but yeah, this has actually been hinted at, so I guess it's not really all that surprising that we are getting this. And yeah, so that I should probably mention is, with Ritsu in all this? Like, seriously, I mean, now we're not, there's a weird thing to ask, but, like, where is she? Because she has, like, literally the biggest state that she seemingly has disappeared after the fight in Amaterasu. So, where is she? Like, is she gonna, like, are we gonna get her, like, in the next chapter? Or something? I mean, the same goes for Arrow. I don't think she appeared after a soul, like, hit her in the throat. This guy is disappearing pretty quickly. And then uh, we have Shinra sweaty. He's like, "How could you do that?" And then we have Hamia crying, and the uh, narration is like, "The saint was the person most saddened by what happened. Such truly is undeniable." And again, yeah, it's it's kind of funny having Hamia have this kind of like holy face and holy eyes. It's because they how sadistic he's been throughout the rest. Be before the entire story, and then we have Shelby like, How could you do that to your own allies? And then we have uh, Homea finally talking, and she's like, Death is the only true salvation. Which, to be fair, the whole point of the, ca the ca white clad was to basically be suicidal, so I'm not exactly sure why he's surprised they would kill their own. And then we have Shelby like, Like hell it is, you can't just decide that. And then we should be like, you're right, brother. However, only a god has the power to justify such an inconsistency. So I guess they were saying, yeah, this can only be justifiable if you follow the guy as a fucking god. And then we have, should be like, absorbing all of the mankind's collection and consciousness, all of mankind's creations, the gods throughout history. And then we see a big... A uh, panel of Haumea uh, standing with her crown. See, we got more like a flower as well as her feet being gold in a, in a, a gold black flame with Avengers behind her. And she's like, as of this moment, that's the kind of god Haumea is. Wait, isn't Haumea supposed to be some kind of saint? Or is Haumea now Evangelist? Or I don't know. I guess it's going to be explained better. Anyways, we also see Evangelist's face, well, part of the face that we've always seen, and she's not in a smiling expression. But yeah, there we have Shinra, I guess, to be like, The Evangelist, you finally show yourself. That's true. This man has been in the story for like, what, over 10 chap, almost, I would say almost 30 chapters, and has barely appeared. I mean, what kind of final boss of a group can this guy be? Can this chick be? And it's, then we have, should be like, the Evangelist is, is in the entire collective unconscious, unconscious has given form. And then we have Shinra, that thing? Wait, Evangelist is a collective unconsciousness? Alright, I get why no Evangelist is a chick, but that's what people's collective consciousness is? What God? I mean... I mean, I'm not, I mean, I'm a fucking devil, so I guess I'm not really one to speak here, but still, I would think our collective consciousness of you human, of you worthless mortals would be something more like, you know, something more over the top. Like some over the top muscular fucking deity creature, like something like folk, something, not a robot figure. I mean, isn't, aren't you guys known for having cults be roped? And why would you think a fucking religious would be of a fucking cult, would be a fucking cult? I mean, I get why you would make the capacity, but say I would think everyone's class of consciousness would be something else. You humans are weirdos. And then we have should be like the collective unconsciousness is a sh sh 
shared content consciousness of all in all of humanity's unconsciousness. The evangelist is that very unconsciousness. It's the materialization of the secret desire within humans. And then we have Shu as those are catastrophes in the last chapter. As it's like the evangelist true form is the spear we saw on the way here. So this is supposed to reference all the tragedy that happened on your mortal plane with like volcanoes, nukes, uh, wars, and all that type of stuff. So I guess that's what Shu was referring to. I guess that's what we were all referring to whenever we imagined the collective unconsciousness. And then we have Hamea responding to Shu being like, you are correct. As a saint, I've been the receptic, receptic, receptic for humanity's collective unconsciousness. But what is the evangelist? What is unconsciousness? I not, now know the answer. Now we have the, the narration popping out, which I'm wondering if the narration is something that Shu and Shu can actually hear, considering the fact that, you know, how meta we are going with Fire Force. So there's in like, the spoken words of our saint must only be true. If the siblings knew she could tell no lies. And then we have Shu be like, so what was the answer? And then we be like, the final point of imagination and at the end of its evolution, humanity desires its own extermination. We kind of could have predicted that a long time ago. It was kind of like what we always thought. Now, anyways, we have to continue, so maybe it's going to be explained in a better way. And then we have, God didn't create humanity. Humanity created God from their despair. And then God gave birth to more despair. But that what is God? Also, we seem to have a picture of some referencing like a man touching God. So I guess this is supposed to reference how like humans in older times, you know, believed in some kind of like a deity. Which to be fair, we do exist. I am a doubt for a good reason, people. So we ha have humanity, um, this representation of how like humans create gods and all that. And then we have, uh, should be like, the sun god? And then we have, uh, how many are right, religion, friends, information, science, art, culture, family. As we get up to Shu and Shu and look at each other when she said family. And I was like, it can be anything as long as it provides salvation. Which is true. Then we have like a very artsy panel of, let's say, a bunch of humans burning, a bunch of something that looks like a church, a bunch of religious type of stuff with Lady Justice also there. And some of like, but humanity's history on the other side of salvation was slaughter, accidents, disasters, sickness. Many new despairs were born. And so learning from those despairs, humanity acquired ethics, values, Medicine, technology, laws. And then we get our Homea back. And it's like civilization advanced, the value of their souls increased, and they managed to keep death at bay. And so humanity earned safety. But had they really, as we get true, look at her, and then she's like, I was like, the safer they got, the stronger was their salvation. Death became more frightful. The fear in their hearts got stronger, and the spirit became stronger still. What do you think came after? Which is, again, hearing true to a lot of people, I'm guessing. And then we have a picture of a city being burnt to asp, as well as like the great cataclysm. And the final uh, page of the chapter, as well as like, Shinra, young saver, in order to stop the cycle of salvation and spare, is there any true salvation other than death? As we get um, the error to be like, the answer found from humanity's history was of despair. Can she not find, find salvation that, that surpasses it? And then we have the top of the next chapter and is, what is salvation? Put it on the nose there. So yeah, this is the end of the chapter. This chapter, there's not really much to say or comment on it. I mean, it's basically the same thing we kind of were expecting at this point. It's, 
you know, just uh, reaffirm the things we already know. It do it goes really deep into some stuff that really hit home. That uh, let's be real here, a devil like such as myself shouldn't be going into. But yeah, it's kind of like true. Where like even though humanity created all this beautiful stuff, like YouTube, for example. Yeah, we still like end up just making things worse. <coughs> China, <coughs> Biden, <coughs> and all that type of stuff. So I guess I do see where it goes to. So that food, in a way, kind of like end this because you don't have to suffer for all this, which is true. But I'm not very curious about what the answer is gonna be because this thing about like salvation is actually like supposed to be very deep so i don't think it's gonna be something like in black clover where asta basically just said well screw you dante i have a strong heart that's the point of evil we get dark emotions sure but we can surpass them and control them with our strong heart like that's more or less the topic like, i know it's been more beautifully worded but you know what i mean like this one's gonna be a little more important moment so that's why it's gonna be more taken more significantly. But yeah, that's pretty much the end of the chapter. No, again, nothing much to say about it. It's very. Eh. So, anyways, tell me in the comments below what do you think of this chapter? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you dislike it? Or did you just find it boring? Tell anything, just tell me in the comments below. And that's it. I cannot wait to see all of you next time. Goodbye.